What is up, y'all? Nick here. Welcome to The Hill, presented by the National Rock Racing Association. Man, it has been a while since I've got to say that to y'all, man. Uh, but I tell you, it, it hasn't been because I, I haven't been missing y'all. It hasn't been uh, because I've been ignoring everybody. It's simply been I have just been a busy guy, <laughs> a busy guy. Huge shout out to Cash LaCroix. Uh, Cash is watching with us here uh, as well as a few others. Um, I ask all of y'all to like and share this tonight. Uh, it helps the sport out tremendously. You'd be surprised uh, how, how much just a, a like and a, and a share you know, it, it could mean the difference of somebody watching this and falling in love with rock bouncing and becoming a lifelong fan. You know, uh, I, I have people tell me all the time that they had no idea about this sport, which rock racing is a pretty small niche niche sport. You know what I mean? Um, but uh, they they hear about it through the show, through somebody sharing or whatever, and they are just just hooked. And I, I love that uh, because to me, this is better than any drug or any alcohol, any drink you could ever have. You know, um, it's just the best sport in the world as far as I'm concerned. Um, Cash saying, what's up, man? Hey, uh, I miss you guys up there. Hope everybody's doing well. Miss Savannah Roy, Steve Jones joining us. How is everybody? Where's everybody watching from? 
Um, I am currently in uh, Tampa, Florida. I will be here for another uh, couple of weeks. And then, well, actually a little bit less than two weeks. And then we are heading out to Visions. Um, we are going to talk about some events that are gonna be, that are coming up here. Uh, but first, I want to get to some of the stuff that's happened since I saw you guys last. Um, and really, what I want to touch on the most is uh, our partner uh, in this show, Wade Good, All Good Racing, going all the way to the very final, uh, into the very last run, and bringing home a championship um, this is wade's rookie season in a big bouncer he stepped up and is running a reject fab chassis this year uh getting out of the utv game he's still racing some utvs but that's a different story um first year taken on former champion tim cameron and uh, uh it, it literally timmy had the championship in the bag but because uh, Wade went out and runs every single race um, as, as if uh, he goes out to he sets out to win every single race and, and we're going to hear him tell us a little bit about that mindset a little bit later on uh, so I, I do want to say we are going to play a short clip of the latest episode of Highway to the Hill that Wade stars in um, so hang out for that I'm, I got a short uh, preview of that to watch a little bit later on but in the meantime, uh, first of all, I want to make sure that everybody can hear me good before I bring my guest on. You know that I always want to make sure we get good uh, sound and make sure that everyone is going to hear every bit of this because uh, my guest tonight is um, definitely going to have some information that you're going to want to pay attention to. But until then, um, let's check out Wade's winning run. Okay, this is at, at uh, Adventure Off-Road Park. This is racing with the uh, Outlaw Off-Road Racing Series. This is their final event, race number five or, or six. They, they have a fairly short season. But, uh, yeah, um, you know, and, and for those that are watching that may not know, that may not have been there, uh, Outlaw runs two buggies at once. They're, they're not racing each other per se. They are running uh, the clock against the clock. But... Um, if you do see two buggies, that's why you see that. Let's check this out. Wade Good racing at Adventure Off-Road Park. This is the winning run. They have that buggy switched on. I, I was talking to uh, Jeff, who is Wade's uh, pit boss, shop manager. Uh, Jeff Jeff does so much for, for Wade. Uh, and uh, he was telling me how just meticulously how they're going through that buggy every single event, every single race. They pulled the transmission out. Uh, Fritz, Fritz has went through the entire transmission, you know, before finals. Just great stuff excellent stuff so listen um my guest tonight also has a hand in helping wade get this buggy ready uh and it has to do with the suspension side of it and wade isn't the only guy that he's working on wade is just the topic because he's happens to be at the top right now but chris has been working with the biggest names in rock racing for a long time and and uh, i wasn't privy to that but we're gonna hear it all right from him Mr. Chris, uh, Way Gant, I want to make sure I'm saying that right. Wyant. Wyant? Okay. Wyant. All right. That, yeah, man. All it, right. It, it's nothing like it looks, man. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Okay. Because uh, if you anybody watching this show will tell you that I'm serious about making sure that I pronounce names right, and uh, so that's it's all right, man. Don't worry about it. That's interesting. What's the uh, what's your heritage, if you don't mind me asking? I don't know. I think it's. Not Smith or you know, anything <laughs> simple. I don't know if it's German or something. Right. I, I, I really don't know. I've, I haven't done like that 
family tree thing or whatever, you know, I don't know. Yeah, that's cool. That's but, still cool, though. That's still cool. Well, yeah. well, that's excellent, Chris. Um, man, I have been at races with you for a few years now, uh, but this is the first time that I'm really uh, getting to see you uh, and really meet you. Um, I want to make sure that everybody, you, okay, there you go. I guess, uh, hey, just for everybody, a heads up real quick, uh, a th- massive thunderstorm has r- rolled in on me as I was starting this show, so uh, if we, if I get, if I lose power and stuff, that's, that's what's happening. Um, so, we, we've been going to races for years together now, yeah. but we've never, right. we've never right. met. Really cross paths, man. <laughs> it's all, I mean, it's just how it is, like. You know, with what you're doing and what I'm doing, I mean, you're not like just hanging out yeah. with your feet kicked up, yeah. and neither am I. No. So that's just how it rolls, man. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, so we we talked about, and we just watched some footage from AOP. You spent a lot of time there in the last couple of weeks, have you not? Yeah, I was there two weeks ago for Ultra Four for about four days, mm. uh, and then turned around, actually left my trailer there. And went back four days later for two days for the Outlaw Finals. Did uh, a little shock tuning on Friday with Adam Cut- Coots, yep, Cuts. Yep. Uh, and uh, then hung out and kind of, you know, tried to enjoy myself. And, and, you know, going going like the Outlaw Finals and stuff is more, you know, I've got a lot of customers there. It's customer support, mm-hmm. customer relations type stuff. Just make sure everybody you know, has what they need. If they need me to help them or, or whatever, just be there. Yep. You know what I'm saying? That's be awesome. involved. Yeah. So that's but, awesome. You know, I want to, I want to yeah. get to that, but first I want to know where all that drive and where has all this off-roading come from in your life? Where did, how did you get started in all this? So I, I don't know. Like when I was young, you know, high school, co- you know, first part of college, I just, I don't, uh, the off-road lifestyle, I guess just, bit me you know what i'm saying i i had a grand cherokee that i did what i could afford and like with some 33s and just all that kind of stuff you know on the ground just made it happen and and went out and wheeled just you know but i, I was driving it there you know what i'm saying i was going land between the lakes or, or whatever you know and just and uh, it just downhill spiral you know it went from like that to a toyota truck that was beat to pieces and so i built a chassis and it just i don't know man just the off-road lifestyle and bug just man it got me yeah. bad cool well, uh <laughs> you mentioned land between the lakes where where are you from well so i, I mean my family lives south of nashville okay. um i live in now i live in glasgow kentucky at, at that time when i was going to land between lakes i was going to college at western kentucky university okay. in bowling green yeah. so me and a couple buddies would lo- load up on a weekend and like go camp and just hang out and wheel and and whatever yeah. but uh so i'm i'm in glasgow kentucky now um been here for probably you know at least nine years at this point so this is this is home now you know so yep that's where i'm at and and this is the home of diddy's big block race shop Correct. Okay. Yeah, this is where my shop is. It's you know, this this is headquarters. Okay. So. Excellent. And you you got family in Glasgow? Oh uh, well, wife wife kids. I'm I'm just wondering if you got. Oh yeah, yeah I got <laughs> I got a wife. I got two boys. They're uh, nine and ten. Yep. So yeah, I mean this is this is where we're at, man. Yep. Just excellent. Yep. Playing ball and and working and and all that. So I say I appreciate you sharing the stories of the boys helping you in the shop earlier, man. I love I love seeing that. I love hearing the stories of yeah. you know family man, being involved. Got I mean you know they're young like the stuff we was talking about, man. I I want them to you know learn stuff mm. and and learn a work ethic and learn the value of a dollar and you know there's. I, I mean, it's a whole tangent, but, you know, I I want to have my boys be contributors in society, yeah. not just, that's right. you know, along for the ride. Yeah, so. That's right. Yeah, that's a good, good way to look at it, man. Definitely on the same page there. <laughs> um, so tell me real quick, what is the, what, where did Diddy's Big Block Race Shop come from? Where, where did that name come from? So, so. A buddy of mine, Andrew Dobosh, he is uh, he's in Chattanooga. 
or Soddy Daisy, whatever. So me and him, out we go back to like e-course racing days. Um, his wife Jessica was racing a Cherokee, and and I was racing my buggy at the time, and and we kind of knew each other from wheeling, like trail, you know, wreck wheeling, trail wheeling, whatever. And we just got to be good friends. Like you know, we we were going to races and. And we helped each other out. You know, she they, she was racing a different, like, uh, you know, category than I was. We just got to be good friends. And, and we just, you know, stayed in touch over the years. He started a company called Forty Swine. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Bubba Bates. Yes. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. So he started Forty Swine. That was his company. He started that and did all the Mark Williams stuff initially. Um we had talked about doing some th- things together. Um, it just didn't work out. He ended up selling the company, and, and it changed hands. And I don't know the exact situation. Anyhow, we, you know, we remained buddies or whatever. And, and it was Mark Williams reached out, was like, hey, we've got these off-road parts. We need to sell them. We need you all to start, like, pushing these again. So he had sold 40 Spline, and he needed a name. And it was just kind of like what he called his shop at his just his goof off like his his just shop at his house or his yeah. shop is whatever yeah. and so we ran with that name for the mark williams stuff well then you know i had always like building buggies and all that kind of like shocks and just whatever it been a side venture you know just stuff to make money on the side and it turned into a full-time gig and i was you know do i by that time we were selling the mark williams parts i'm like do i create another name for my shop and I, you know me and him talked and I was like you know I'm just gonna run with that name you know it's just I don't know it's interesting mm-hmm. I've you know with you know actually I you know the logo I sent you mm-hmm. you're the first person to see it yeah, that's and cool. then the first you know you're the first person to post it on social media and all that I'm you know the logo obviously was cool or whatever but it's it's kind of not really where my business is at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's why kind of mixing up with the shocks and and whatnot, that's, that's more the direction that I'm heading. Mm -hmm. Um, we'll always do the Mark Williams stuff together, uh, with me and Andrew, but as far as my shop's concerned, that's a hundred percent me, like my shop and the buggies I work on and the shocks, that's all, that's all me. Uh, you know, the Mark Williams stuff is a joint venture with me and Andrew but i needed something man i get guys they're like man i see you're like you build motors yeah and i'm no nah, yeah. it's not it's not really what i do so you know it, it was just kind of time to make a make a change and just kind of turn the logo more in the direction that that the my business is going you know what i'm saying yep. I got it up on the screen here for everybody to to kind of watch. Uh, I, I do appreciate you letting me reveal. I love doing reveals on this show. Uh, buggies, yeah. logos, it doesn't matter. I, I love being the first, yeah. and, and I appreciate that. It, it worked out perfect, man. I've just been kind of like sitting on the logo for like a month or so, yep. and I've been working on it, and, and what, it just was perfect timing. Yep. So. It is. Uh, I really uh-huh. I really dig the shocks in there, but it really leaves it open too because from the sounds of it, you have a deep history in off-roading, period. So if you wanted to yep. dabble in building big blocks, you, you could. Uh, it leaves it open, you know? I, I, yeah, I mean, I could. I, 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 I try and, you know, I feel like, you know, I talk to racers. You know, it's, it's like you got to have a suspension guy mm-hmm. like me. <laughs> you got to have an engine guy. Mm-hmm. You got to have a tranny guy. Yep. You know, you, you got to have different people that help you out. And I don't know if I ever build engines, but, you know, chassis and suspension and shocks and just fab work is, is that's kind of my, what I do. Yep. I mean, the shocks is definitely evolving and, and moving quickly which is nice but you know that's that's kind of what i'm trying to build for the future for myself i guess so yep. that's awesome um let's see wade good says well your boy needs some new stickers <laughs> i got you wade all right and paul browder says wizzo yeah paul's bowling green guy bowling green's about 30 minutes from here i've been helping paul out for years just whatever you know whatever he's got a trail it's like a 
just a trail rig pretty cool oh, okay um no no relation to dex browder i'm assuming no 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 okay. no, no yeah i don't think so which, I mean. which is another driver that you help absolutely yeah yep. i've been working with dex since he had misfit yep. you know or was was running misfit you mm -hmm. know yeah and yep. then with the new one so yep, absolutely um right before we went live i was talking to you about how i had some folks from radflow on now uh, you don't you don't have a brand of shock right do you do you prefer or recommend any shock brand over others um i don't so i get that question a ton there's four brands that i prefer to work on or i would recommend um, if I'm going to sell you a shock, it's going to be a Radflow or an ADS. Okay. Um, I can, you know, fo basically Radflow, ADS, Fox, or King. Okay. Take your pick. I don't, I don't care which one. They're all, in my opinion, quality shocks. Um, they all have their own positives and negatives, you know, or, or you know, as, as far as the quality is concerned and like that, the end of the day, what you get, they're all awesome products. Okay. They're all, but they all have different things that make them better okay. in certain ways. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They're just different. That's fair. Um, you know, if you want like a, if you want a bypass with a clockable top cap, you've got to get a Fox. You got to get an ADS. Okay. Um, you know, there's, it's just different features about each one. I, I like, Radflow and ADS are super easy for me to work with and get parts and get custom, you know, to, like I can order those manufacturers and get spec things and, and get certain things that the bigger brands won't accommodate for mm. because, you know, King has been in the game for years and they're going to do what King wants to do. Mm. And, and that's fine. They've, they've earned, they've earned that right to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. For years, it was King and Fox. You know what I'm saying? That was all you could get. Yeah. Fox is huge now. I mean, look at they've got a uh, Ford OEM part number with the Raptors and you know trucks and whatnot. And then they've got you know Can Am that they're doing shocks for and Polaris. And you know, in the scheme of things, you know, off road is a small portion of their business at this point. Yeah. They, you know, when you've got a skew with Ford. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know what else do you need to say? Right. So yeah. it, it's it's harder with those Fox and King to get custom or spec things. You're just gonna get what you get and modify it from there. Right. Great products. You yeah. know, all four of those are great products. Um, in my opinion, they're you know, if I can make a suggestion, pick one of those four. Yeah. You know, people. I get that ask question constantly. What what shocks do you recommend? I don't. All four of those are great. Yep. Pick one. Whatever makes you feel good, get yep. those, and I will help you make it the best it can be. Yeah, yeah, that's that's cool. That's interesting. Um, uh, yeah, it, no relation to Dex Browder. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then um, Mr. Clint Garrison checking in. Uh, Clint, another guy stepping into the big buggy game here, says that's your man for shocks right there. Knows them inside yeah, and man. out. I appreciate you watching, Clint. Thanks for hanging out with us, man. Uh, David Fletcher yeah, checking Clint's, in, too. Clint's like uh, 30 minutes away oh, from cool. me. Oh, cool. That's got to be helpful. So when he had the side-by-side, -side, I've helped him. I've fixed a lot of shocks for Clint. Yeah. Clint's hard on parts. Yeah. And uh, when he picked up that buggy from, from Danny, man, I was I was pretty excited about that for, for a number of reasons. I mean, just for Clint and, you know, I've. I had worked with Danny a little bit, but okay, he was, was a Memphis, say. man. It was, yeah. it was hard. It was hard to cross paths, man. I mean, he works hard just mm -hmm. like everybody else. And it was, we kind of got started on that buggy and never got to finish it. Yeah. yeah. So I was, I was excited in that aspect to kind of take that buggy from what we started on it. And now that Clint's so close, we get to kind of finish it or dial it in yeah. as, as it needs to be you know yeah you know I, i'm gonna start playing some footage of guys that you help out but while i play that um you know you, you talk about getting started with danny and then not really be able to dialing it in do what what is what's included in that i mean my goodness it, it... So, so 
so that situation was, you know, Danny got that buggy. We met at AOP, and he, you know, when you get a brand new build, I don't care really who builds it. There's always gremlins or, or whatever you want to call them, new, new buggy, you know, just blues or whatever. So we were there at AOP, and I kind of put a baseline in it, and, you know, he couldn't keep, you know, the belt wouldn't stay on. We, you know, some sway bar arms got bent, and it, we just couldn't, you know, do a full tune session on okay. it, so to speak. And he, you know, like I said, he's in Memphis. I'm in South Central Kentucky, you know, a good four or five hours away. And, you know, um, I work my business full time and, and he has whatever, you know, he has a full time job. And, you know, we, we would talk and he would hit me up. You know, I've, you know, I've got a wife and two boys. Um, Danny's a little younger and, you know, I think he got married last year or whatever. And he'd, he'd call me up or whatever. And just, it just didn't work out where we could, you know, or, or we both didn't maybe take the time or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Just, we couldn't get together and like finish what we started. So he ran, he ran that season, uh, last year and he did quite well. Very well. Yes. On, you know, shocks that really weren't what they needed to be Mm -hmm. and he i mean that's i mean i guess props to him or whatever you know because he he took something that was kind of incomplete and i think everybody's seeing how how important this uh suspension game is these days and uh (laughs) you know he took that and and made it work so you know props to him for that but you know, I was just, I, it was always one of them things in the back of my mind that was like, man, I, I'd really like to get that where it needs to be. Mm-hmm. And then just whatever happened, life happened. He stepped out, Clint picked it up, and yep. Clint being so close to me now that, you know, 30 minutes down the road, you know, I, I got a chance to kind of finish what I started, I guess, you know, and, and now he gets a chance to kind of take that rig and, see what he can do with it man yep. so that's that's exciting and clint's young man it's it's exciting to see you know new people get into the sport and and get you know they're fired up about it and that's cool yes so i enjoy it yeah totally agree because uh, you were talking about some racing some uh uh racing that hasn't been going on for a long time what, what did you mention the the east coast race so, series e- e-course e-course yeah uh was an endurance series mm-hmm. like i said when i when we I was racing it like 2013, something like that. Yeah. And it just kind of, you know, series come and go, and it kind of ran its course, and it it went by the wayside after a few years or whatever. And and uh, you know, Dirt Riot was like you know the We Rock thing yeah. kind of jumped in a little bit after that, but it's kind of you know it's gone away as far as I know. And yeah. So, um, but yeah. Yep. Um, it, now we talked about that is unfortunate about what happened with Danny, and I, I totally understand how how that can happen for sure. Life life just happens. Um, but right. it, in a perfect world, when, when you get, I mean, I know that you worked with Shane Christensen, right, on the new Gold Rush buggy. Was that yeah. was that something that you were able to start to finish, get tuned, or his new one? Yes, or the old. The new one. So, so the new one hasn't been. We haven't worked on it. Okay. Um, okay. He took he took the package that he had on the original Gold Rush, okay. which I I worked on in Missouri um, at you know whatever the property is out there that yeah. uh, you know all the Missouri guys go or what or whatever. Yeah. And uh, Phil Licardi was out there. I met him. And we, we worked for a couple days on, on those Missouri guys' rigs. And we worked on Gold Rush and a uh, number of other rigs. You know, I, I think um, who's Shane's? Who, uh, uh, Matt, so Matt, other, uh, uh, Matt Schisler. Yeah, Schisler. Yep. yeah. Yep. We, worked, we worked on his and, and Jay was out there. Yep. I think he... I can't remember which rig he had at that point. Jay's had like what three or four yep. or something. Yep. Uh, it, he had one of the original reject buggies out there. We worked on it. There was just a number of one, different ones. I think uh, Adam was out there, mm-hmm. and 
uh, I don't know. Yep. So we got started on that one, and um, he had Shane had ordered some shocks through Phil. Okay. And we worked on them and got them working kind of okay on his original buggy. Okay. But they were a, a great platform to build from. So when he had the new rig built, he stuck with them. And, you know, we just, I've talked to Shane a few times and, and we tried to get together and tune that rig. It just, I mean, I've seen a lot of stuff. Like people are like, where's, where's that new, you know, gold rush buggy. And I've, I've, from what I can tell and what I've heard, I mean, just life yeah. happens to people. You know, yep. like, you know, ra- racing is not the most important thing. No. <laughs> you know, you got family and all that kind of stuff that comes first. And, you know, yeah. I, I've seen some stuff posted. I'm like, dude, like that dude has a kid and a couple kids. A wife yeah. And he's got yeah. you know, a his own business, yeah, I mean, a couple of businesses. He, he's got a family and a business. Yeah. And, and for whatever who am I to say anything, but from what, all I've heard is he's just busy with, with life and his family. Yeah. So if you don't like that, I guess I don't, I don't know. Yeah. So uh, I guess what I was trying to get at with those last two questions was I, I really wanted to nail down what is a perfect scenario for you tuning a, you know, a tuning session, a tuning weekend, whatever. So, right. So, most usually you can get it done in a day okay. you know and and for like a trail rig you know i do a lot of shock tuning at aop it's a great it's a great park mm. great you know great owners great man you know people that run it and they treat me awesome and and for most people i, I tune racers there whether it's ultra four whether it's rock bouncer um doesn't matter um but usually it takes a day um and it, it just kind of depends. Like, for trail rigs, I can knock out, you know, four in a day. Really depends on if you're. It's like a four shock rig yeah. or like an eight shock rig. Mm. I kind of gauge it by that and kind of figure out how many I can, how many shocks I can actually do in a day. But for a race rig, it just kind of depends on what you want. Like, I'll do some private stuff. I've had some racers that, <clears throat> you know, want to do like a private one on one no distractions like all that you know that's great that's fine we'll spend the day and and knock it out but you know you've got to be able to take what they have and establish a baseline and then uh, improve upon that based on what they want you know whether it's a whether it's a bouncer or ultra four you know they all you have to start somewhere and then have an end goal and then on top of that like a like a perfect example for um like every driver is different um misfit is a perfect example dexter drove it yep we had that thing set up you know dexter loved it and then wade gets in it and he wants something different Mm. so we make changes for him Mm. so it's not like shock tuning is not one size fits all mm. even on the same rig with the same shocks it's it's very much driver specific mm. so you know i'll get people that'll be like well tell me what you want i'm like it doesn't matter what i want right. if you're especially if you're racing yeah. you you know you got to tell me what you want because i can tailor it to you right. but you've got to give me some feedback on how you want the rig to perform or react on certain obstacles. So, you know, a normal tuning session takes about, you know, a race rig, it's going to be more involved. Obviously there's a specific goal and it's racing. Hmm. Um, You know, a trail rig, you, you can spend a few hours, get a guy, you know, working great compared to what he had. Mm -hmm you know they're not out there racing for money yep. you know they just want to be comfortable right. have some fun yep. and and be able to ride trails yep. and have a blast at whatever they feel like is fun for them yep. so yep. um you know it just kind of varies based on what they want to do yeah for sure do you think that the sport could ever get so big where guys are tuning because arguably you could say that each race could have its own tune well so with 
uh, external bypasses, right? You've got the, you've got those adjustments that you can make on the fly, okay. and that's something that I try and work with guys that want to. Uh-huh. But like certain certain people are gonna take what you do, and they're like, you know what? This is awesome. I'm gonna make it work for everything. Mm-hmm. And then you've got the guys that want a little more, and you know, I'll. You know, I would love for guys to be able to take their rigs to different courses and make adjustments. Mm-hmm. And you, I mean, honestly, you know, different guys will hit me up at races, be like, "Hey, man, it's doing this. Mm-hmm. What do I need to do?" Yeah. Okay, well, you know, make this adjustment. Okay. Or you know, just just stuff like that. I mean, you you've got to be able to tune if you have the capability with the external bypasses to tweak that stuff you know that's that's the goal is like i want to put valving in there that works and then we can tweak based on the course and mm. you can have something that works for a variety of different terrain whether it's you know like this last weekend aop was you know it's a lot of rocks mm. really rough you know guys are talking to me like hey man i i think i want i'm gonna loosen it up a little bit i'm absolutely yeah. you're you know you're not gonna be running you know through some jumps and yeah. all this other kind of stuff like you might see it in america you don't you don't need it you're not gonna be jumping it 10 foot off the ground and, and you know yeah. all that kind of stuff you're just trying to go as smooth as possible through some big rocks up a hill yeah. so you know make some tweaks make it fit your course and and then you go to another course and and you make some changes from there but if we can establish you know a baseline with some valving in there that will work for you you know across the board then you you have a product that you can tweak on and if we keep some good notes like yeah you can go back to square one yeah and adjust yeah. And then you've always got the baseline to go back to but um and that's that's something you know We've, I've kind of talked about with Wade in particular, like, you know, well, you know, he, he talks, he asks questions, which is great, mm-hmm. man. Like, I want you to ask questions. Like, that's how we all get better. Like, let's talk about it. Yep, that's right. You know, did, did something happen during this race that you didn't like? Well, if you don't tell me, I can't help you fix it. Yep. So, um, you know, he, Wade's definitely one that we've worked a lot on, but I mean, look at the, Look at the results. Yeah, definitely. You know? Yeah. Uh, Timmy Cameron I'll, comes to mind too. I'll, yeah. I mean, I, I worked with, with Timmy here not too long ago. We used AOP, man. Like, mm-hmm. um, I, I, and, and most racers, I'm like, tell me where you want to go. Like, I don't want to waste your time. Yeah. Like you tell me within reason where you want to go shock tune and, and we'll make it happen. Yeah. I want you to, I want you to get the best results for your money. Yeah. And we used AOP, uh, you know, we, you know, we've talked, I talked with Timmy here and there, just, you know, same thing. Like he'll, Hey man, it, it kind of did this, like, yeah. you know, but, so, but he, he likes to do his own thing, mm-hmm. you know? I, I, so it, it was cool to work with him though. I mean, hell, I mean, he's, I mean, if you, anything about rock crawling, you know, that guy's That's name. That's right. So yeah. It was, it's kind of cool to work with them, you know. Yeah, nice, super nice guy. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So. But uh, uh, but I get it, man. It, it is, uh, and Timmy builds from start to finish, so it doesn't surprise me that he wants to learn about how to do it from the best and then do it himself. Well, so we had I had talked with Timmy last year at Hawk Pride. He was still building the current rig Tyrant, that he's racing. Yeah. He's like, hey, man. Uh, when I get this thing done, would you be interested in shock tune? I said, absolutely. Mm. And we were just talking about parts and lead times and blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. And then I ne- you know, he built it, never really heard from him. I seen him posting videos where he was like shock tuning it on his property. Mm. And <clears throat> I seen some of the videos and I was like, man, it's a little, I mean, it's just, it is what it is. I was like, I don't know, man. Like some of them things you were hitting, like, I don't know how helpful that was or wasn't, Yeah. but, uh, he, we ended up, I think it was the Blue Holler Outlaw race, man. We crossed paths, and he's like, dude, I think I'm ready to maybe, you know, get, get a little help or, you know, see what you think. Yeah. And uh, and he had been changing stuff, and, you know, he, I mean, 
I guess dude spends a ton of time tweaking and, mm. and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. um, it just, he, he asked for some help and I, I mean, I was glad to help him out. It was, it was a cool, cool deal, man. Yeah. That's awesome. That's cool. Uh, we were watching some footage of, uh, Paul Wolf uh, out there racing at Moab as well up against, you know, this is the best in the, in the country, in the world, really. Lauren Healy was out yeah, there, man. you know, and, and uh and paul is new as is wade is new to rock bouncing in the big buggy you know paul is new to the yeah. ultra four the 4400 class um so you have some personal experience in the 4400 class co-dogging you want to talk yeah. about that yeah so uh i i co-dog for cody hardesty 408 he's out of louisville um i guess started i went with him to hammers not year before last as uh like he had asked me to work on like services shocks before hammers uh we just kind of got to know each other through that and then he i i hit him up um because i was needing to ride out there i was gonna work with phil lacardi out there on some shocks and just do some shock tuning, all that kind of stuff. And I, I needed a ride out. And I was, it was like I was gonna either going to ship my stuff out there and fly out or try and catch a ride. So ended up riding out to Hammers with uh, Cody and Chase Hunter. And, you know, you spend that much time on the road and then that much time out in the desert with somebody, you, you kind of get to know somebody a little bit more than you knew them before. It's, you know. Yep. And uh, Chase was building his own race rig, so... Cody's like, hey, like once we worked together, like I helped him in the pits and helped him prep and all that kind of stuff after I got done shock tuning. And um, he's like, man, <clears throat> you know, Chase is fixing to build his own rig. How you feel about co-driving? I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm down. So last year we we done, um, you know, we did Rush. We missed AOP because he got married that same day. And then we did uh, finals and I don't know, whatever – so between last year and this year, I, you know, I've, I've been, you know, co-dogging with him and, um, dude, he, he's young, he, you know, Cody's 29 and he, he's a hell of a driver, man. He's, you know, he's super fast. Mm -hmm. Um, we've made some, you know, suspension changes on that rig. It's a TMR chassis yep. and, you know, he was doing great with it, but you know, you go out to hammers and some West coast stuff and you realize like, man, maybe my suspension's like, it's not where I need it to be. Mm -hmm. And so this off season, we talked a lot, looked at some things, um, made some changes to the trail and arm package to get some more wheel travel, yep. uh, shock, shock package. He, he, you know, went, went big on shock package and stepped up to, to an ADS package that, Man, it, it's really nice, yeah. and it's it's been a game changer just from, you know, the racing we did last year at Nationals mm -hmm. and, and out at Hammers, man. Like, it's ridiculous. Like, we were we were going, you know, 70 miles per hour through whoops, and you were like, okay, <laughs> it's no big deal, man. Wow. And uh, you, we'd go faster, you know. Yeah. And wow. He stepped the motor game up, and, you know, <clears throat> this – we went to Rush um, – Kind of had some bad luck. We, you know, we qualified pretty good, and we was having a good race, and and had some brake issues. And then this last uh, two weeks ago at AOP, man, we was, you know, again qualified pretty well. I think we we're ninth out of, you know, twenty or whatever mid pack. And um, man, we we was having a good run. We after the first lap, we jumped from ninth to first, um, and we was we was in first place still after our second lap and uh started we lost a dropped a cylinder on mm. the third lap and it just kind of fourth lap it was like all we could do to get back to the pits man so i don't you know i was texting with cody earlier like hey where are we at on this deal because you know visions is weeks away yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh you know you know try and get that sorted out so we can make that trip to visions but he's a uh, it's been a it's been a great i love it man he you know i'll, I'll co-drive as long as he wants me to and you know we've we've only improved you know the little time that we've really been together racing and um I'll, it, it it's it's just one of them things like we kind of talked about like if you're 
in, in my position, like you've got to, you know, walk the walk other than just talking the talk. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like, yep. We're, we're in a, we're, you know, I'm in a buggy that we've made suspension changes to and, and Cody's a driver, no doubt about that. But like the suspension work that we've done has been a game changer. Yep. We can push that car yeah. as, as hard as we want, yeah. you know, that's crazy. And, and it's, it's awesome. So yep. I, I love being involved, man. You know, I, I enjoyed when I was driving and racing years ago, but people are like, man, how do you, how do you co-drive? And, uh, Cody's a great driver, man. I, I trust him. Uh-huh. You know, we was at rush on like two wheels on our side and he drove out of it. And yeah. I was, I was fired up. Yeah. Heck yeah, After dude. The race, he's like, dude. he's like, I didn't know what you was going to say when, when we was up on two wheels. I was like, dude, I love yeah. it. And you drove right out of it. Yeah. We never checked up. dude. Yeah. Love it. It was awesome. So that's cool. Yeah. That adrenaline rush too, man. Gotta love it. Yeah. That's what I was saying earlier about no no drug or drink can can do what this sport does, man. It's it's unbelievable. Nope. You know. What what do you what do you think uh do is there a big difference? Obviously there's gotta be a big difference in a a shock package that you give to a a rock bouncer driver, uh, you know, than a forty four hundred car. Uh despite them really doing a lot of the same thing. I mean so that shock package difference is huge yeah. and i'll get guys <clears throat> i'll get rock bouncer guys that are like hey man do i need four inch bypasses on the back i'm like no you don't mm. you you i mean look at the weight difference yeah a 4400 yeah. packing around 30 plus gallons of fuel mm-hmm. i mean 32 is probably like the low side of of a fuel tank on an ultra four and a spare tire and, mm-hmm. and tools. And, and I mean, those things, an ultra four car is a freaking tank. Yeah. And if you take a bouncer, look at most of them. I mean, behind the passenger compartment, you've got what a, a 10, 15 gallon cell, maybe, maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah. no spare tire, mm-hmm. no tools, you know, probably, you know, you're going to have a radiator, but, the, the weight difference is huge mm-hmm. and so you you have to have the weight to make a shock like that work mm-hmm. like you can't just take a bouncer and throw a four inch shock on it and and expect it to to work that great like do we manipulate it and make it work mm-hmm. absolutely mm-hmm. you've just spent twice the money mm-hmm. like why mm-hmm. no, no reason for it you know, yep. take a take a two five or a three zero. You you have to have a reason to justify that kind of shock, and most of the time, a bouncer doesn't have that. And it and it's purely weight. You know, I, I've you know these rock bouncers go out to Mid America, and there's a short course, mm-hmm. right? You know, a lot of these races are like some cor- some sort of short course, some jumps, whatever. And then you hit a hill. Yep. And my opinion has been, like, if you're the fastest one to the hill, like, all you have to do is climb the hill. Yeah. Right? I mean, not trying to underplay it or anything, but if you can be the fastest one to the hill, mm-hmm. then, you know, uh, I think it makes a big difference. If you can be the fastest one there and climb it respectable and fast, like, it's a winning combination. Yep. And, uh, you know, you, you see a lot of these guys hit those jumps. He, you know, Mid-America always comes up. That's what the videos you see. These guys hit these jumps and the rear end just, you know, packing. Yeah. I'm like, you know, when I, one of these days I'll get somebody to, like, hang a tire off the back and, mm-hmm. and try and make a bounce jump flatter. Um, fly straight. Yeah. But, it, <laughs> yeah, you know, try, try and fly straight. Yeah. I've, you know, I, this is something I talked about with, you know, a couple different racers last year. I've talked about it with Wade. I've talked about it with Clint. Like, you know, if you have something you can manipulate the weight, mm. like like a sled pulling truck. You know, they hang weights for a reason, yeah. right? Yeah. They they're trying to make the front end stay on the freaking ground yep. and and hook. Yeah. Yep. You know, um, same type of thing. Like if you can manipulate the weight and where you want it, you can make the chassis do what you want. 
you know, is that going to be something you want all the time? Like, no, mm. that's why I feel like you could hang a spare tire and mm-hmm. fill it with water if you wanted, yeah. you know, and you can manipulate the chassis and make it do what you want at certain places. Just like we talked about adjusting on bypass shocks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's all about different possibilities to manipulate how the buggy works at different courses. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. Maybe maybe one day I'll get somebody to bite on that idea. Yeah, but. well, you never know, man. I mean, yeah, you yeah. never know. It, you know, it wouldn't take much to be able to fabricate something in that you could remove uh, when right. when you don't need it there, but have that yeah. added weight. AOP, do. Yeah. AOP, you don't need a spare tire right. hanging off the back. Yep. But yep. Mid America, yep. Probably wouldn't hurt. Yep. No doubt. So. Yeah, that's a good call. That's a good call. See, we're always having great ideas on the hill, baby. That's what that's what this show is all about. <laughs> Just need somebody to bite on it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, man, uh, so we got a few people checking in here. Trey Moore wanted to say what's up. Jeremy Burgess. Chris Griggs says, co-driver here for Team Hard Rock Carnage A-Class. Didn't know Chris was involved in E-Cores. Talk about throwback. Uh, I had Chris on the show a couple of weeks ago. Another, again, old school, you know, he, he racing goes back uh, on the East Coast, yeah. you know, so very cool stuff bringing people together like that. Um, let's see who else. Trey Moore says, I have a tremendous, uh, I have a tremendous amount of respect for Wizzo and the work he has done. Kenneth Cozine checking in, Bad Donkey. That's another buggy that you've that you've worked on. Uh, yeah. You know, I've got his shocks here at the shop right now, getting ready for uh, visions, <laughs> man. Nice. I got Paul Paul Wolf shocks here. I'm, uh, you know, yep. it's it's stacked up right now, man. Yep. They're what the crowds I guess watching. Up. Yeah, right. The crowds watching uh, Kenneth down there at at uh, the Memorial Day event. He he ended up. Um, taken out of an axle shaft so he was a three-legged dog there but but he still went out and that old buggy man i love that old buggy that, that buggy's timeless you know oh man so that buggy the uh portion of the subframe that's still there that thing was like a jeep at one point and it, my buddy had it here local <laughs> it was green and portion of that buggy is still kind of there wow so kind of interesting who, who owned it before kenneth uh i can't remember his name yeah oh man i just watched a video of it too kenneth kenneth will chime in here hopefully kenneth who, who owned it before you man it's right on the tip of my tongue i know i know somebody will be able to tell us here but I, but yeah anyway yeah he he bought that rig from my buddy mm-hmm. and like killed that thing yep. very quickly it was a super clean jeep buggy build and yep. then I think Scott at Sunfire maybe uh, yep. built it to what it is today. Crouch. Yeah, Kyle Crouch. Kyle Crouch. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, cool. That's cool, man. Man, you got all kinds of shocks and, and stuff in there. Uh, what is, you know, are, are you going to be able to, any, any issues getting all this stuff out? How, how do you mail a shock? Uh, it's expensive yeah. and U- UPS yeah. uh, or FedEx, if whatever's most economical, man. Like, actually, Kenneth's not that far from me, okay. so he drove down one morning yeah. uh, and dropped them off. I'm assuming he will probably pick them up. Probably doesn't make sense financially to ship eight shocks for him. God. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what Paul's going to want to do. He's in Illinois. It's a little bit further. Yep. Uh, man, I'm, I'm trying to get these shocks out as quick as i can yep because shipping shocks close to an event makes me nervous yeah because yeah. ups i mean or not not just, just shipping in general right ups does a great job whatever trey moore's delivering to your parts across the country i think yeah. and uh he, he drives semis for ups but okay. uh it, it's just ske- you know how it is it's sketchy yeah no you doubt know? and that close to a race man yeah, yeah, I hear you. Especially visions too. Nobody's gonna want to miss visions. Yeah, man. Uh, our- yeah, I, I sweat like Ultra Four and and Outlaw. Like I had brought shocks for customers that were racing, you know, to pick up before the race instead of ship them. Yeah. So you know, maybe 
we might do some of that for visions. Yeah. I don't know, whatever. Yeah. It is what it is. Yeah, no doubt. Um, let's see here. We've got one more. Let's see. Austin Sterling says, Diddy's Big Block. Austin Sterling joining us. Well, Chris, man, this has been great. Uh, is there is there anything else that we missed? Anything that I left out? I think we... I don't know. I mean, we could talk for a long time, yeah, probably. Yeah. Just, I don't know <laughs> what keeps people's interest. Yeah. Um, but, uh, no, nah, man, just... I, I enjoy working with everybody, whether it's a trail... Like, I had a, uh, Anthony Cummings, you know, he brought his Jeep down today, trail rig, Jeep buggy type rig, and we worked on them today here at the shop and cool. you know everything from trail rigs to racers man what whatever it's it all is is a good time and yep. you know just being able to take what somebody had and make it better and and see somebody fired up about you know their rig or or their racing or or whatever man it's it makes you know what i do that much better like that, I, I feel like I have a, a, a great job, yeah. if you want to call it that. Like, I just, I get to do what I love yeah. every day. And I've got a lot of people that, you know, support me with that. And, man, I can't, there's, you know, a lot of people I could thank, man. Yeah. Just, I, I, I greatly appreciate it. Yeah. So, Man, the, the passion, uh, I, I mean, I see the passion in you. And, and I think that that's, that is helpful uh, with your customers uh, as well as guys like me who, who are watching your customers, uh, you know, ultimately yeah. um, that passion just goes so far, you know, and it carries throughout, you know, because if you're passionate about it, then your shock, you know, the guy who you're doing the shocks for is going to be stoked and excited about it. And, uh, you know, so I, I love it, man. Uh, you're right. This is this isn't a, a job. It's crazy that we get to do this every every single day. Right. You know, I'm not a shot guy, but I, I pretty much do this every day and all day, and, yeah, and uh, it, it's pretty amazing. So, Chris, I, I appreciate you coming on the show today. Uh, I, as I tell everybody, you you're more than welcome to come back on. Um, you know, and and let's yeah, let's uh, revisit again and and uh, just and get caught up for sure anytime. Yeah, man. Well, may, maybe at Visions we can hang out yep. for a minute or something, yep. and, and I'll shake your hand and yep. meet in person one time. And got to happen. Do it any time. Yep. I'd, I'd be glad to be back on the show, dude. Like an hour came and went. I know, I know. It, felt like it, it does. Was a minute, right? Yeah, it does. It but, goes uh, fast. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, I, I mean, I gotta thank my wife. Please. And my yeah, kids. absolutely. Man, they, they let me do what I do and what I enjoy and you know make a living for our family and we, we have a great time and we get to do different things uh, gotta thank Phil Licardi at Liberty Mountain Fab man he helped me more than anybody else in this in the off-road industry he still helps me I can call him text him whatever man cool. and, and he's there to help me out and we work side by side on you know some different things and he Dude, he, he helped me get where I am today, so I can't thank him enough. That's cool. Uh, you know, Justin Holt with Reject Fab, man, he's, he's probably the first shop or whatever, you know, to give me a chance. To like, dude, show me what you can do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I feel like the results have, uh, sp you know, spoke for themselves, I guess, you know. Yep, no doubt so, about it. Great dude, man. I, I appreciate his uh, friendship and everything, so... Yeah. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Both both y'all had a, a championship buggy on the on the podium last weekend, man. That's, yeah, that's man. very cool. That's very cool. Yep. All right, man. Well, listen. You have a great night, and uh, I will see you very soon. Yeah, man. All right. See you, vision. See you in Oklahoma. <laughs> All, All right. right, Chris. Have a good yep. one. See you, man. Chris from Diddy's Big Block Race Shop. Weigh in. Did I say that right, Chris? Weigh in. I want to make sure I got that right. Hey, listen, uh, I promised everybody in the beginning uh, that we would go back and watch a quick little excerpt from uh, the latest uh, 
the latest episode of Highway to the Hill. Um, for those of y'all that don't know, the Highway to the Hill series is a, a series that um, uh, Clyde Bynum and I came up with. Uh, it is the ultimate backstage pass, if you will, uh, into the lives of the biggest names in rock bouncing. And this latest episode, uh, there's, it's two parts, and uh, the latest episode was the second episode from um, uh, featuring Wade Goode in All Goode Racing. This uh, took place at Wildcat Off-Road Park, a race that Wade ultimately won. And uh, we had a blast filming it, and we had, uh, and I've had an even more blast putting it together. So I'm gonna play this real quick uh, section for you, and then, and then uh, we'll we'll call it a night. Like I tell everybody, I don't show up to lose. I don't care if it's my first year, first race. If I show up to a race, I show up to win. And anything less is kind of disappointing, but. It's, it's a different it's a different game though. It's from a UTV we learn quick, and we still make mistakes. I mean, I flipped in the first turn today, so it's a big buggy. We've had good luck, we've had problems, but we have fought through them just like we did in the UTVs. And the main goal is to finish every hill all year, no matter if it's 20th place or first place. I want to finish every hill. I've never seen Timmy drive as hard as he, which makes it harder because there's two or three people pushing him that could mess up points. Now there's, there was six or seven. If, you, if he does mess up, he's so fast and corrects himself so well, he can, he can mess up and still get second or third. So it's gonna be real hard to do, but I, I think it's very doable. That was the voice of Mr. Wade Goode. And again, he was the star of uh, the latest episode of Highway to the Hill. It was a two-part uh, episode, and it is only available on Rock Racing TV's YouTube channel. Uh, I'll try to get a link to it. Or I saw Miss Miss Chris, Miss Christy in here. Christy, if you uh, have that link available, if you don't mind putting it in the chat for me, that would be a huge help. But if not, uh, I'll get it in there. No big deal. All right, everybody, uh, I'm going to get out of here. Future plans for the next week or so. Uh, my little sprouts are going to be here in, uh, I think, uh, Emerson's counting down. I think she's down to counting down the hours now. My kids are coming to visit. They're going to be here in just 11 days. Uh, I am super excited. They're going to be here for a few days. And then we are leaving for Visions. Yes, I am going to have my kids at visions and i don't know if there's anybody else more excited on this planet than me uh i can't wait to introduce them they've they've already been to a rock bouncer event they went to a, uh, an event last year up in new hampshire uh my son even got to drive a rock bouncer i know that i've probably told that story a million times but uh i am very proud of him he got to drive a rock bouncer before his dad no big deal but uh, yeah, this is going to be their first major event and their first time at uh, Mid-America Outdoors. So I'm very excited to be sharing that with them. Uh, and I want to share it with y'all too, man. So make sure if you see us, come on out and, uh, and say hi, introduce yourself. And uh, we, we look forward to, I want to I introduce them to, to the whole Bouncer family. Uh, Miss Christy, I see you put that uh, link in there. Thank you so much. I appreciate all that you do. I got my All Good Racing shirt on. Y'all get on over to uh, All Good Racing, Cash LaCroix Racing. Uh, give them a like and a follow and support them in any way you can. And the same goes for Diddy's Big Block Race Shop. I meant to throw that in there, but just for situational awareness, Chris has uh, an account on Facebook and Instagram for sure. So y'all get over there and uh, give him a like, share, and, and follow him, uh, as I'm sure that um, he would appreciate that. All right, everybody, I'm going to get out of here, but I appreciate everybody hanging out. And I will uh, keep it locked, man. Uh, I don't have any guests scheduled at the moment, but that doesn't mean that we can't go live uh, talking to the biggest names as in the sport as you know it. This is your number one spot 
for all rock racing news uh, and anything rock racing related. I love all y'all, man. Thank you for joining. We'll see everybody soon.